Hey you guys, here we got section 5.2. What we're doing in this section is we are verifying trig identities. So if you remember the first section of this chapter, it was all about simplifying stuff that looks like this. Well now we have an equation, a left side equaling a right side. And what we're gonna have to do is try and simplify um, one of the sides. We're supposed to use the more complicated side. Actually, I'll get to this stuff in a second. But um, we're gonna simplify stuff. And then what we talked about in class was sometimes it's hard to know in the simplifying the questions that we already did in class. Sometimes it's hard to know when you're finished. And so these are actually a tiny bit easier because they tell you when you're finished. So you're finished when this side, you've manipulated it, you've canceled stuff out, you've simplified as much as you can, you're done when it equals cotangent of s plus one. So you're done when the left side equals the right side. So there are a couple things that I wanna draw your attention to up in this box if you need to pause the video to copy these things down. These are just strategies or things that might help you in doing these problems, these examples that I'm gonna to get to in a second. So. Um, memorize and rearrange some of the identities that you have memorized. So for example, this doesn't look like what you have memorized, but it's a rearranged version of that equation. Remember sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one, and you can move stuff around in those equations. Um, another thing is to try to simplify the more complicated side of the equation. So start with the complicated side and try and simplify as much as you can and hopefully that will eventually equal the less complicated side. So you only really work with one side of the equation, the more complicated one, and once you get it to equal this, you're finished. Okay, um, another strategy, what we've talked about in class already, is to try rewriting everything in terms of sine and cosine. So remember how cotangent is actually cosine over sine. So strategies like that. Uh, sometimes you'll be factoring or using common denominators. So this is a ton of Algebra 2 stuff. So some of you that are getting sick of the trig geometry type of math that we've been doing, this chapter is very Algebra heavy. Um, another thing is to use reciprocal, so don't forget those reciprocal identities. Sometimes we turn secant into 1 over cosine. We've been doing that all semester long, though. Number six is a new one. Um, this is use conjugates. So conjugates, again, is an Algebra 2 topic, and when you've probably looked at conjugates, you've done it with I or with radicals. It's kind of similar here. One strategy is if you have 1 over 1 plus sine theta, what you can do is multiply by 1 minus sine theta. It's called the conjugate because the sine is different. Everything else is the same. But if this blue is your original equation, then it's kind of like how we show our work using a common denominator. Well, this isn't a common denominator, but it's multiplying the top and the bottom by what's called the conjugate. And the only thing is, is the difference is that whatever the sign is here, you change it. And that goes on the top and the bottom. And then I'll do an example so that you can see what happens after you do that. But that is another strategy that you might not think of right away. Um, in order to simplify some of these. So I'll come back to that number six when we get to it, okay? But I'm just gonna dive into this very first example. So what I'm gonna do is I have two sides of the equation. This side looks the simplified version to me, and I'm supposed to show that this really complicated side actually just simplifies to that. So the first thing I think of when I see something like this is to distribute. So again, think back to like what you know about Algebra 2. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the cosecant of s. I know it's weird that they're using an s. Sometimes they use an x. Sometimes they use a theta. Um, it's just a variable. So cosecant of s times cosine of s plus cosecant of s times sine of s. Okay, so that doesn't seem any less complex to me, but... Cosecant, I'm going to try and use one of those strategies. I think that's 1 over sine of s, right? Times cosine of s. Okay. And I'm going to do 1 over sine of s here times sine of s. So all I did here is I used the strategy, uh, what was it up there in the box? Uh, number 5, use reciprocals. And what I did is I'm just kind of messing around here. I'm trying to see if I can get this to manipulate the way I want it to. I'm thinking ahead. Isn't cosine over sine the same thing as cotangent? So keep in mind, this is our goal. This is what we're trying to show. And hopefully you notice that this sine s can cancel this sine s. Okay, so we're actually making some big progress here. Cancel that, cancel that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all of this into one fraction here. 
So I'm going to put cosine of s over the sine of s. I'm going to keep that plus sign. And now that everything's canceled over here, I just have this 1 hanging out. Okay, so it's looking really similar to this side. I just have one more step. Isn't cosine over sine equal to cotangent? That's one of those things that you memorized on the first day of notes. Um, so this means cotangent of s plus 1. Okay, cool. So now that this was what I was starting with, now that my left-hand side, cotangent of s plus 1, equals my right-hand side, I'm done. That's the whole goal. Left hand side equals right hand side. So what I've done is I've used, um, I've used all the identities and stuff that we have memorized, the reciprocal functions, anything I can just to try and simplify this so that it equals this. And once one side equals the other side, you are finished. Let's try another one. Here we go. Okay, so I'm seeing a bunch of squared stuff. And I know that I have a bunch of formulas that I can replace like all these squared things. So don't you have a bunch of like Pythagorean identities from the very first page of your notes packet? You can flip over to that or maybe you're watching this video with your unit circle out with some formulas on it. But I'm pretty sure that one plus cotangent is one of those identities on that piece of paper. I'm pretty sure that it is cosecant squared. Okay, awesome. And tangent squared, I'm just going to leave that for a second. And now what I'm going to do is I think I can maybe simplify this by changing stuff into sine and cosine. So tangent squared x, if you remember that tangent x is sine over cosine, so it works the same way, you just square the functions. So tangent is sine over cosine, but since tangent is squared, I need to keep sine and cosine squared. It's kind of like keeping it in the same language, I guess. And cosecant, I'm going to write that as 1 over sine. So all of these reciprocal functions and the properties and stuff that you guys have memorized already, they um, apply to squared functions as well. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So um, what I'm going to do here is I can cancel the sine squareds. So that worked out nicely, and now I just have 1 on top and cosine squared x on the bottom. And keeping in mind that this is my goal, this is when I'm trying to get the left-hand side to end up matching the right-hand side. So I have the 1 on top, that's good, um, but I think that this is probably another one of those Pythagorean identities. So remember that you can rearrange that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And so if I want to get the cosine squared by itself, I can do that off to the side. The function that I have memorized is this. So if I want to get cosine squared by itself, I need to move over the 1 minus sine squared x. So I'm just rearranging some stuff. This came over to that side of the equation. So what I can do is rewrite cosine squared x as 1 minus sine squared x. And now finally, it equals the right-hand side. So again, remember, you are finished when the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, okay? So it's just kind of like manipulating and playing around with the equation so that you can prove, if you remember proofs from geometry class, that's kind of what these are, is you are proving that this simplifies to this or that it's the same exact thing. It's just written in a different way. So some of you might have been wondering um, on this first one why I didn't decide to distribute like I did on the last one. And I could have done that. I could have done tangent squared times 1 plus tangent squared times cotangent squared, and that would have eventually, like, probably gotten me to the same place. If you guys remember back to geometry class, when you guys did proofs, your proof was probably never identical to the person sitting next to you, but it was a valid way of doing the proof. So keep in mind, that's one of the things that makes this chapter a little bit more difficult or frustrating sometimes, is that there's not just one way to do some of these identity um, verifications. So just keep that in mind. There are multiple ways to do these, and uh, we just have to practice and keep trying trying and eventually you'll be able to manipulate left side equals right side. This is what I thought of doing first. You might have thought of something else and you might get it to work out. So just keep that in mind, okay? I'm going to do one more over here. 
Um, in this case, this side looks a lot more complicated to me than this side. So I'm going to try working with this side over here. So what I want to do is show you a strategy. Um, I don't know if you remember something like this from Algebra 2, but do you know how um, if you have something like x minus 3 over 4, that's the same thing as x over 4 minus 3 over 4? Do you guys remember that? So um, remember, it's like kind of backwards common denominators. Once you have a common denominator, you can write it all as one fraction over that same denominator. And so um, I don't know if some teachers use this thing called the heart method. You can split up your fraction. So you have x over 4 minus 3 over 4. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm actually going to call it the heart method just to see if, um, I don't know if there's any consistency there, but I'm going to split up this fraction into that minus that. So that's a strategy for you. Again, this is Algebra 2, so depending on what kind or what level of Algebra 2 you had, maybe you've seen that um, thought before, maybe you haven't, but I'm going to change this into tangent t over sine t cosine t. Not sure why they're using t's here instead of thetas or whatever. Um, but I'm going to also do cotangent t over that same denominator. So kind of splitting them up into two different fractions. And then I'm going to change now everything into sine and cosine. So I know I can rewrite tangent using sine and cosine, and I can also rewrite cotangent using sine and cosine. So I'm going to get a little bit crazy with some fractions here, so stay with me. Okay, so I just turned tangent into sine of t over cosine of t, and this denominator stayed here. I'm going to keep my minus sign in the middle, and I'm going to do the same thing over here with the cotangent. I'm going to rewrite that as cosine over sine. Okay, so all I did literally was I changed tangent of t into sine over cosine, and I changed cotangent of t into cosine over sine. Kept everything else the same. So now is when I have to actually simplify um, the fractions. Do you remember how to do a fraction divided by something? It's the same as flipping and multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So AKA keep the top and multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. And maybe some of you can see where I'm going with that. Do you see how the signs are gonna cancel now? So that's good, that's what we want. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to keep the blue, this cosine of t over sine of t, and I'm going to flip and multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator here. So that means 1 over sine t cosine t. This is just dividing fractions here. I kind of have two problems. I have this side and I have this side. Okay, so what I can do now, like I pointed out to you guys already, is that like the sine of t cancels here. And on this side, the cosine of t cancels here. Again, just keep in mind what we're trying to do is just simplify this thing. So now I have 1 over, I have a cosine here and a cosine here, and that makes cosine squared. Keep the minus sign in the middle. And same thing on the other side, except it's sine. I have a 1 in the top, and I have sine squared of t on the bottom. Yes, sine times sine just makes sine squared. It's just like doing x times x. That's x squared. Okay, so this, I'm running out of room, but isn't 1 over cosine squared, isn't that the same as secant squared? And isn't 1 over sine squared the same as cosecant? And finally, pretty sure that's what I was trying to show. So again, here we have left-hand side equals right hand side. Okay, so that was a little bit longer, but that was just fraction stuff. So I told you guys in class, um, this chapter is a lot of algebra skills. So if you were really good at algebra or you're excited to be doing some algebra again, this is going to be good for you. Um, if you struggled in algebra or maybe you took algebra a few years ago, then just keep that in mind that this might be a little bit difficult for you while you re-remember some of those strategies and those skills, okay? I'm going to save the last two for class tomorrow. Uh, thanks for watching. Bring your questions. Have a great night, you guys.